Greetings. In this problem, we're going to use Graham's law um, to um, identify how far down a one meter tube ammonia gas travels when at the other end nitric acid gas is traveling. And we're going to use Graham's law, which says that the rate of effusion is inversely proportional to the molar mass. Now, for two gases, we can relate them in this ratio, this um, here, which says that the square root of the molar masses is inversely proportional to the root mean square velocity, where mu is the root mean square velocity. And in the last section of the text, um, we um, covered kinetic molecular theory, and we showed how the root mean square velocity for an ideal gas is, is related to the square root of 3RT over the molar mass. And we can derive this relationship from these fundamental principles. Um, but this gets a little bit complicated, and there's a sort of an easier way to memorize how to come up with this. And that is, is we can use the um, concept, um, one of the postulates of kinetic molecular theory, usually the fifth one, is that um, the average kinetic energy of a gaseous system is proportional to the temperature. And we know that for a particle, the average kinetic energy is one half its mass times its velocity squared. Now, the issue with a, um, a gas is a gas is not a particle. It's many, many, many particles. And there's a velocity profile. Some of them are moving very fast. Some of them are hardly moving at all. And so we use the root mean square um, of, um, of the velocity, which is actually a speed. Um, to um, represent the average kinetic energy. And what we could say is, and there's a bit of hand waving going on here, that one half um, the molar mass of the compound, in other words, how many um, it, its molar weight, um, of one compound times its root mean square velocity um, is equal to one half times the molar mass of a second compound times its root mean square velocity squared, OK? And I'm um, recognize here the first compound will be ammonia, and the second compound will be nitric acid. Now, I can cancel off the halves and rearrange this as the molar mass of the first compound divided by the molar mass of the second is equal to the root mean square velocity of the second squared divided by the root mean square velocity of the first squared. Now, this equation is actually this equation. They're the same equation. The only difference is, is if I take the square root of both sides here, I get this. Or if I square this, I get this. Okay. Now, we, um, we're after the distance. Okay. We don't have any distances in our equation. We do know the molar mass of the first and the second, but we have two unknowns, OK? So there's no way we can solve this when you have two unknowns. We need another equation. But first, let's look at this and get this in terms of distance. What is velocity? Velocity is the rate of displacement per unit time. So I could say that this could be equal to the distance the second object travels over the amount of time divided by the distance the first object travels over the amount of time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to square everything just to keep it neater, OK? Here I square the individual terms. Here I squared everything. And um, now I can cancel out the distances. And I'm making the assumption here that I applied both of these at the same time. So they started diffusing at, um, at the same time, or refusing into here. And so the distance they um, traveled um, is related, the ratio of the distances is related to the ratio of the velocities. OK, I still have two unknowns, d2 and d, d1. Um, but I have a measurement of the distance. So I need a second equation. And what I need to recognize is that as these diffuse, at some point they meet. And when they meet, they form ammonium nitrate. So the total distance of both of them is one meter, the length of the container. So I can say that one meter is equal to d1 plus d2. Now I've got my second equation, OK? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a block here, because of this isn't a very large chalkboard I have to work on. And here's my first equation. Here's the second equation. And I can now solve this. I have two equations, two unknowns. 
Now let's rewrite this equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore this central part, and I'm going to write the ratio of the masses in terms of the ratio of the densities. But since, I mean, of the distances. But since I'm after distances, I'm going to take the square root of both sides so it actually has this form here. So I come over here, and I've got my molar mass of the first object um, divided by the molar mass of the second object, and I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm just going to do this once instead of twice, okay? But this is the same thing as here, okay? And this is equal to the distance of the second object over the distance of the first object. And these were squared, but when I take the square root, it becomes d2 over d1, okay? Now, I want to solve the distance of ammonia, and I'm calling ammonia my first object, d1. So I need to cancel out the d2. So I go to my second equation, and I solve my second equation for d2. Now that I know I solved this, I can substitute in here. So come in here, d2 is equal to 1 minus d1. So I now can come over here and say this is equal to 1 minus d1 over d1. Now I have one equation, OK? I'm really not looking at this central stuff, OK? This equals this equals this. So I'm just going to remove this so you can focus on what I'm looking at. I know my molar mass of 1. I know the molar mass of 2. I don't know d. One equation. This is all equal. I can solve it. So the first thing I do is I multiply. I want to multiply everything by d1 so I can get d1 on one side. So let's see if I can get this in here and you can see it. So if I put a d1 there, I multiply this side by d1, and I multiply this side by d1, that cancels. Now I need to bring everything with a d1 to this side, OK? So over here, I have a d1. And I have the first term here, which is the square root of m1 over the molar mass of m2. So these are my ratios of my molar masses. And now I have a plus d1 here. I mean, a minus 1d1 here. So I add a d1, and I add a d1. So I add a d1 to this. Now, since I'm after factoring out the d1, I'm going to go plus 1 here, which is the same thing as saying d1 times this plus d1 times this. So I brought the d1 over. And what is left? What is left is just the 1. Now, I, now that I've got my d1 times the factor, I can factor it out, and I got d1 is equal to 1 over. Now, I'm not sure why, but I always like to write these as 1 plus the square root, not the square root, plus 1. And this is the molar mass of the first object over the molar mass of the second, which is now equal to 1 over 1 plus the square root. Um, the first object was 17.03. And I could write AMUs in here. I probably should, but I'm running out of room, so I'm not going to. Um, divided by 63.01. Now what I'll do is I'll get out my calculator. I'll take 17.03 divided by 63.01 and hit the square root sign. Then I'll do a plus 1. Um, and then at, and equals. And then I'll take the reciprocal sign, OK? And when I do this. I get um, 0 0.6579, 0 0.6579 meters, OK? And these numbers had four sig figs, so I'm going to use four sig figs in my answer. And I look at the question, and it asks for millimeters. So this becomes 657.9 millimeters, OK? And, um, and the take home message here is if I remember one half mv squared, which is something hopefully most of you have known from prior knowledge, um, I could come up with this ratio, um, even though that's not the rigorously correct way of doing it, and that this really is a many molecules, OK, in this relationship. Um, but I can come up with this relationship here, and then I can solve in and substitute. And remember that if you ever have more than one unknown, you need to go look for a second relationship, a second equation. Okay? Well, I hope that helps, and good luck.